Hey everybody, Technically Jeff here, and today I'm gonna to be testing out this F790 Full HD dash cam from Thinkware in my Kia EV6. So Thinkware is a big name in dash cams and they sent me their F790 Full HD dash cam to do a review. It's much less expensive than high-end 4K dash cams, but it does still have some solid features like HDR, which helps improve clarity and day and night recordings, technology to minimize image distortions, built-in Wi-Fi and smartphone app support, speed and red light camera alerts, a GPS built-in, advanced driver assistance tech, and you can wire it up with parking mode if you get the optional hardwiring cable too. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed and take a look. First, we've got a little note about the mount. Then the dash cam itself. It has the wire already connected here. It's nice and compact. The camera angle can be adjusted easily, which is nice. There's the micro SD card slot. We have the control buttons on the bottom. And it looks good. Next up is the memory card and an adapter. It comes with a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, but you can obviously install a larger one. Then we have the rest of the charging cable. We have a fairly thick instruction manual here. Some customer service info. And we have an extra strip of double-sided tape, which is handy. And that's it. So for mounting it, I'll have it up on the right side of the mirror here. I'm going to be doing some dash cam comparisons in the near future, so I'll need space for them all. This one just plugs into the cigarette lighter style 12 volt outlet. And it should work well. Taking out the rest of the power cable here. You can see it's very long. That will make routing it under the dash and up the pillar and over to the dash cam easy. I'm not gonna do all that right now since I might be giving this unit away in the near future, but if you wanna see how to run wires in the EV6, I do have another dash cam install video that you can check out. This wire just plugs into the one already in the dash cam. First though, I'm going to install the memory card.
It only fits one way. So it needs to be face down. And there we go. Now I do want to show you how the dash cam is removed from its cradle. You slide this button over and it is a very tight fit. That's what the first little paper was telling us when we opened the box. And we can see how it all fits together. Then it just snaps back in place. Now looking at the manual, it does have information about the buttons like manual recording button, Wi-Fi, that sort of thing. It also has a hard wiring diagram. It has info on using various features. using the mobile viewer on your phone, warranty information. And that's basically it. The rest is other languages. So next I'll go ahead and plug it in. These cables just fit together. Then I'll plug it into the car. Then I'll turn the car on and it should turn on automatically. There we go. I'll take this film off of here and now we're good to go. So let's get to the app. I pulled up the app in the Google Play Store, downloading and installing now. Then we'll open it up and grant it permissions. Then I need to register the dash cam in the app. So this is the F790. I'll push the Wi-Fi button on the dash cam and then connect it to its Wi-Fi on my phone directly. The default password is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I'll tap always connect and now it's registered. It does show a firmware update available, so we'll download and install that now. And there we go. Now we can go in and look at the settings. In the memory card settings, you can adjust various recording options here.
Then in the camera settings, you can adjust the brightness, which is good. And if you have a two channel setup, you can adjust the rear camera here as well. And you can see we have a lot here in the recording settings. You can adjust the incident recording sensitivity, night vision, HDR, There are also parking mode options and battery protection as well, which is good where you can have it automatically shut down based off of the 12 volt battery voltage if you have it hardwired. Then we have road safety settings. You can adjust various alerts and warnings. And then we have the system settings themselves. Now let's check out the live view. You can see me clearly. <laughs> I do like that it has the lines to help you adjust the placement. And it looks good. Now let's check out the recordings. can see the files. They have labels for continuous recording or impact, which is nice for easily identifying which is which. And you just click and it pulls it up. It works well. Then we have a link to support and app info. And that's the app. Now for mounting it and running the wires, it does have plenty of cable where you can hide the additional wire connection for a rear camera in the headliner very easily. And you just put it right in the center under the mirror. Now let's check out its recording quality. Again, this records in 1080p and I do have HDR enabled. It's got a nice field of view. Cropping in on the street sign, it's not super clear, but for not being 4K, it's not horrible. The sound quality is pretty good. Now cropping in on this passing car, you can see the type of vehicle very easily, but you definitely can't read the license plate. Let's try another one that's not going by quite so fast. Here you can kind of read the plate, but it's still pretty blurry, not ideal. So overall, I think it's a mixed bag. The image brightness and contrast are solid. I think the HDR helps there but the clarity with 1080p means you can't really get details like license plate numbers. Now, if you just want a dash cam to record driving situations to show an insurance company that 
you're not at fault in case of an accident, or if you just want to get regular recording, then being able to read license plate numbers might not matter. But if you want to be able to read details like street signs and license plates, this probably isn't the one for you. You'll probably want to get a 4K dash cam. But for the cost, this one is definitely not bad. I'll post a link in the description, but it's only $170 on Amazon. And it does come with solid features for that price. HDR, built-in Wi-Fi and GPS, smartphone support, advanced driver assist features, and the build quality seems pretty good. Let me know what you guys think in the comments though, and if you have any questions, let me know. Stay tuned for more dashcam videos too. I have another one I'll be reviewing soon that I'm really excited about that you're not going to want to miss. I'll also be doing a dashcam quality comparison soon too. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.